And if people can't trust not only the executive branch, but also don't trust Congress and don't trust uh, federal judges to make sure that we're abiding by the Constitution, due process, and rule of law, then we're going to have some problems. Here. Hello? We got problems! I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. America's evil genius back with you once again and as this week has gone on I'm telling you the soap opera that is the Barack Obama administration has continued we might ought to just call this as the administration turns now I guess the NSA scandal has been all over the place it's been particularly troublesome and I wanted to talk a little bit about it today uh, as this is the latest in the long line of scandals that Barack Obama has undergone I mean the only thing right now that's missing is Monica Lewinsky. Is there one of those in a closet somewhere? I shudder to think. But nevertheless, the NSA phone spying scandal has been all over the board, and now the White House is doing damage control. They have come out and claimed that all of this spying on phone calls and phone records and metadata, as they like to call it, all of this was necessary, necessary, they say, to prevent terrorist acts and to fight terrorism. Really? Well, I'm not sure if I believe that, but on the off chance that was actually their intention, logically it just doesn't pass the smell test. I mean, when you think about it, if it was necessary for us to keep phone records and spy on phone records of all Americans, no matter whom they were, all of us, you, I, everybody, without targeting them, without targeting particular groups of people or religions or so forth, and we have to just randomly get phone information on everybody, if that was so necessary, then why did Fort Hood end up happening? Why did Benghazi end up happening? Why did the Boston bombing end up happening? Giving the administration the absolute benefit of the doubt, which I don't like to do, but giving them the benefit of the doubt, even if their intention was to thwart terrorism by this massive government spying on phones, even if that was their intention, it seems to me that it didn't work too well and that the results would tell you that they might have been better off targeting some of these resources that they used to spy on everybody to instead spy on certain groups of people that, oh, I don't know, are most likely to actually be terrorists. Who'd have thunk it? You know, maybe you spy on Muslims' phone calls or phone calls out of mosques or things like that. Wouldn't you be better off to better target and more efficiently target your resources and what you're doing rather than just blanketly putting them out there over everybody willy-nil as though you don't know who a potential terrorist could be? You see how ridiculous it is when you actually think it through. But the truth of the matter is I, I don't honestly believe that this massive phone tapping and phone spying and so forth, data gathering as it were, I don't honestly believe that this was all about just finding terrorists. And I know they're saying they they're saying oh well we, we, we stopped fifty terrorist acts because of this. Well, even if that's true, and I'm sure people are gonna look over the next few days and, and fact check that, but even if there is some degree of truth to it, again, you have to prove that the only way you could have done it was to gather data on everybody, including the majority of us who never could be terrorists at all. Could you not have done the same thing by targeting actual potential terrorists, such as Muslims and people of Middle Eastern descent? Could you not have done that? Was it necessary to bring everybody in under that blanket? I don't see how it would have been. And that's why I have such a hard time believing this line of BS, I mean line of reasoning, that the administration is giving us over this thing. Particularly when you take into account the actions of this administration on all of the other scandals that have gone on. When you look at the IRS scandal, were they targeting terrorists there? No, they were targeting Tea Party groups and conservatives. When you look at all the things they've done over the years with their legislation and targeting people who opposed Obamacare, when you look at all of the things 
that they've done with their lapdogs in the media. Oh, go back, for example, to the Boston bombing when so many of us instantly knew, hey, this is Muslim terrorism striking again. And when that came out, and that idea was all over the internet, what happened? Obama comes out and chastises everyone for jumping to conclusions on Muslim terrorism, even though the conclusions we jumped to turned out to be 100% correct. What I'm getting at is this. Barack Obama has shown a tendency in all of these scandals to be very aggressive about targeting people who are not enemies of this country, while at the same time going soft, to say the least, on those people who actually are enemies of America. He, he's tapping our phone calls and looking at our phone data to go go strong on terrorism well it would be the first time he's done that because he seems to spend all this time going after conservatives going after tea partiers going after people who defend the constitution instead of going after people who oh i don't know pardon my french blow the ever-loving fuck out of americans every time they get the chance excuse me if this president was going to use the internal revenue service to do battle with his enemies something I'm not comfortable with, but let's face it, something that practically every president has done since the dawning of the IRS. If he was going to do that, then for God's sakes, why didn't he turn the IRS on mosques and Muslim organizations? He never did. He turned them on conservatives. What this should tell you is something very simple, very clear, and frankly, I'm shocked that I even have to come out here and say it, but yet as I look around the media, I'm not really seeing anybody else say it. Barack Obama sees certain people out there is as much of a threat or more of a threat than Islamic culture, than Muslim culture is. He looks at Tea Partiers. He looks at conservatives. He looks at constitutionalists. He looks at ordinary, regular, hardworking Americans like you and me as just as much of a threat, if not more so, than Muslims. And I am comfortable saying that because I am judging his actions while in office. When it comes to Obama's enemies and the people he wants to stop, those enemies have not been Muslims and terrorists. Those enemies have been you and I. Those enemies have been Americans. Those enemies have been the people who are trying to defend this country. Not those who are trying to destroy it. Not those who are killing Americans left and right at every turn. Now, I am not willing to go so far as to say that Obama is on the side of the Muslim terrorists, though I'm not willing to rule it out either. Maybe this is all just the fact that he's been so miseducated in his life and has been, he's been turned around away from what's right and wrong throughout his entire existence. I don't know. I don't know what his motivations are, but the bottom line is it doesn't matter. What his motivations are do not matter. The results do. And this president, I'm using that term loosely, has spent his administration not targeting those people who are America's enemies, read Muslims, terrorists, and Middle Easterners. And I know some of you are saying I'm being discriminatory. You're damn right I'm being discriminatory because they're discriminatory against us every time they fly a plane into a building or every time they put a bomb along the side of a road. You're damn right we should discriminate against them. They're fucking killing us. Do you not get that through your head? Again, pardon my French. So yeah, we should discriminate against them. But the last thing Barack Obama wants to do, for whatever reason, and I don't know what the reason is, but he wants to make sure we're not discriminating against America's enemies. But he sure as hell doesn't, bother, doesn't care to discriminate against those of us who are patriots. It's sick, it's sad, and it tells you that our biggest enemy as a nation domestically, anyhow, our biggest domestic threat is the one sitting in the White House. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.